Hey guys, and welcome to the first devlog for the NPC Manager system. This is a brand new side project I've been working on for the past, oh, two weeks or so. <laughs> and it started as a suggestion on Discord. A user was asking uh, if in the future I would consider working on an NPC schedule system. Uh, basically a way to have NPCs uh, have like a little routine that they go about their day. And I really, really like that idea. Uh, in fact, I thought it was super interesting to do. And it just coincided that I was hitting a little bit of burnout with PCG doing the landscape stuff. So it just seemed like the right time to maybe take a break from uh, working on debugging landscape code and maybe look into this cool idea. Uh, it's also the fact that I was thinking eventually to make a pedestrian system for PCG and I haven't talked about it before because um, I don't want to get people uh, excited or give uh, people false hope if it doesn't work out but it just happened that it was the right time and a really cool idea. Uh, so here we are. Uh, what I want to do today is I want to show you guys a little demo map that you guys can see here. Uh, mainly, I want to show the different little features that I've added. Uh, I do want to warn you, the code is super, super early. So hopefully it doesn't uh, implode or have some severe bugs, but we'll see. And I want to know your opinion, right? So again, what is the whole point of this uh, project? It's pretty much what it sounds like. NPC Manager is basically following uh, the same idea that you would find uh, in games like Skyrim or Oblivion, we have NPCs that have like a daily schedule, right? Uh, if you go at certain times of the day to a town, uh, the NPCs may be doing certain things. And if you actually follow the NPC around, like you could do that in Skyrim, for example, you'll see that they actually have a daily schedule where they could go to the market at certain times of the day and then they can go somewhere else. And eventually at night they go home and they go to sleep. And if you break into their homes at night, they'll actually be physically there sleeping in their beds. Uh, so that's kind of the idea, right? Uh, so what I have here is a little demo map with a bunch of NPCs. And just for fun, I give each NPC a different name so we can kind of see what each one is uh, doing. We got Mark here, June, Autumn, Mary, Taylor, uh, Bailey, etc. And we have two houses, which are going to be the NPCs home. We have a little warehouse here, which basically means this is where they go to work. And then we have a nice little pizza parlor, which is where the NPCs are going to go have some fun. And you can see we have a little uh, dance floor here with some lights. We have some booths here and we have a little cashier so people can, uh, can eat. And if you want to kind of come up here and hang out and you can take a look at the action, you can do just that. Uh, we are going to be following our uh, main protagonist today, and I've named him Bob. Uh, so I have a little blueprint that basically follows around any NPC, and we can just kind of see what his day looks like. We're going to look at the demo. I'm going to be commenting as we look, go about, and then afterwards, I'll give you kind of an overview of how everything works and the setup. So normally, I would do it the opposite way, but I don't want to make sure that everybody looks at the demo because that is the cool part. So... Without further ado, let's see what it is that I've, I've been uh, working on for the past uh, two weeks. So I'm going to go hit play here and I'm going to maximize. And as you can see, we have Bob who is, uh, is just starting his day and he just knocked off his uh, bookcase here and he is leaving his home. And we're assuming that um, it is in the morning. You can see there's a bunch of people in town. Everybody's kind of walking around. But we're going to stick to Bob and he has a schedule, Bob. And the first thing he's going to do in his schedule is he's going to go to work. So you can see that that we're following him and he's walking around and he is going to uh, work in this uh, warehouse here. And once he enters the warehouse, he is going to do one of many things. Um, you're going to see in, in much more detail later, you can see that I, he just decided to talk a little bit with uh, Abe. He's not facing him, unfortunately, but that's something that we're going to have to fix and I'll explain exactly what's happening here. Uh, and then after a little while, he's probably going to move on to a different area. You can see in the background there, 
there's two people that are supposedly fixing something uh, over there on the left hand side and now Bob decided that he's gonna go around and I think he's done for <laughs> with work for the day um, and Anna decided to start talking to Raphael spontaneously that's a spontaneous uh, social reaction I'll, I'll explain how that works later and let's see what Bob does uh, there's a lot of randomness in the schedules here so this is not completely scripted the only thing I am scripting is a series of tasks and then the NPCs each individual one based on chance and uh, time range go about their days um, so if I run the simulation 10 times you're gonna see very different things every time you run the simulation so I guess we're gonna go to the pizza place we're done with work and you can see that as we're going inside we have a bunch of people that seem to be dancing there uh, and gathering around. You can see, <laughs> you can see that uh, Kelsey is having a lot of fun there. Elizabeth is talking to Michaela and is having a little trouble moving around. And we can see that if we look at the above, uh, we got uh, some NPCs kind of chatting around. We have a little bit, a little bit of a um, traffic jam up, up there just based on um, the narrow path. And you can see that Bob decided to start chatting up Kelsey even though she is uh, clearly dancing uh, without a care in the world. Um, and now I think, let's see, where is he going now? I think he's going to go upstairs. Yep. Uh-oh. And this is one of the challenges that you have when you have a lot of uh, NPCs trying to go around a very narrow area, uh, we can get uh, some issues here. Okay, so I think Bob is going somewhere else now. Let's see. And uh, I think his day's done. Um, I put a very short amount of time in his schedule so we can see the whole cycle. The last thing on his uh, schedule is to go home at the end of the day. So he woke up. He went to work for about 30 seconds, then he went to have some fun at the pizza place for about 60 seconds. And now, for some reason, he's struggling here with the nap mesh. And then eventually he should go back home. And then if we wait long enough, the cycle should uh, repeat. And you can see some traces here. I forgot to turn off some traces here. I'll explain what that is later. But let's assume that you put appropriate times. This is what would happen at the end of the day. Then he'll just come back home, completely go over his furniture, and just kind of hang out here uh, doing his thing. All right. <laughs> uh, I was kind of hoping Bob would go upstairs, but uh, regardless, you get the point. If instead of following Bob, I just hit on simulate, then we're free to basically look at what's happening here. You can see that a bunch of people... Um, either decide to go to work or decide to go into the uh, pizza place here. And if I just kind of take a look here at what's happening, you can see that as they come in here, they tend to go to predefined spaces, what we're calling stations. Uh, and these are randomly um, managed by a manager that is in charge of this entire building. Um, you can see that if we follow Charles here, he decided to come up here. He'll eventually hit a specific place that's been predefined. And then he'll play a random animation out of many. And the same is happening for all these different NPCs here. If I go to the warehouse, you'll see that we have some people like Liza supposedly working on something. That's a different station with animations. Tom is talking to himself here. And we got some conversations that are happening here. And eventually, what you'll find is that we have some NPCs that are going to be roaming around this area randomly, like free roaming here. There's also a little path. Um, they may be taking a stroll around the pizza place. And there's some random waypoints that happen here. All right. So if I uh, go to game mode here, you'll see that we have a little bit of a better idea of what's happening here. But let's go step by step. Now that you've seen kind of the demo, um, even though it wasn't ideal, you got the idea. Let's take a look at kind of the main idea here, right? So the MPC manager system is a very generic system where you can assign each different NPC in your game a specific profile. 
So if we pick this guy here, NPC male 11, or as I like to call him, Kevin, and we go here, we see that we have an NPC controller component. And I'm trying to keep this as modular as possible. So all you would need to do for any NPC in your game, any model, any whatever, is just add this little component here and he will automatically uh, be hooked into the system. And you can see that we have options here like whether this NPC is active or not. I always like to have that. That gives you the option of completely turning off an NPC for whatever gameplay reason um, at runtime. You have a list of profiles and you can see here that we have an option to use time of day. Right now that code is super buggy so I have it disabled. But the idea will be that you'll be able to switch profiles based on the time of day. So let's kind of put that on hold. You can see that we have a profile list. And right now we only have one, but it is an array. So you can have many different profiles. And when I expand the profile, see that we have a specific profile class. And we have a time range, which is the start time and the end time. So this will be the hours of the day, right? So you would have profile demo NPC2 load that between 6 a.m. and 12, you know, noon or 13, which would be, you know, 1 p.m., right? And then you would have many different profiles and you would give time ranges to the profiles and based on the time, the NPC would switch profiles, right? And if we click on this profile and we open it, let's take a look at what that looks like. You can see that each profile has a list of tasks. That's all it is. It's a task list. And when I expand it, each individual task here, in this case, we have three, has uh, several different modes. You have a task mode, which means that for each individual task, you can either specify a point of interest, which is kind of the main uh, way that you would do, do that, a standard task, an actor or a location. I haven't implemented these two, but those should be fairly easy. And if you select a point of interest, then you have a point of interest class array and you would have point of interest like POI warehouse or POI pizza place, which are going to be obviously these guys right here. You can see that it's like a little blueprint with a volume or a POI for a pizza place. And if you have a list <clears throat> and you have the mode to be use a POI, when it starts this task, it'll pick a random point of interest. And then it'll look at the task duration. In this case, it's between 30 seconds and 120 seconds. It'll pick a random time within this range. And then there's a percent chance to execute the task and a Boolean uh, um, specifying if you can be interrupted or not. So every single NPC that has this profile will choose either to go to the warehouse first or the pizza place first. And then it'll decide to be in whichever place they decide between 30 seconds to 120 seconds. And it will always execute because it's 100%. You also can use a standard task. And in this case, this is the example for the next task is use standard task. And the standard task would be something from this list. So right now I have four different tasks that can be standard for every NPC. You don't even have to specify a specific actor. That would be go home, roam in nearby bounds, find the nearby waypoint, or follow a nearby path. So you can see here that this is, for example, in navigation, a bounding box, NPC bounding box. And if I show it here, you can see that we have this box right here. So if, if an NPC hits that task, it'll do a trace, which is what you were seeing earlier. You will find the nearest bounding volume. And if it finds one, it'll come here and it'll roam around randomly in this volume for the specific duration. You can also have a path, and you can see the path right here. Very similar to the Animal Behavior Kit. As a matter of fact, I copied the code and modified it a little bit to suit this project, but it's the same idea. Each path is made of waypoints, so you can see that there's uh, waypoints there. So if you have the standard task B, find the nearby waypoints, you can find any of the waypoints on the path randomly. Or if you say follow nearby path, It'll find this path here and then it'll follow the path in order. So you'll see NPCs actually going around. And in this case, this path is looped. So some NPCs that are, are going to be in this path are going to be kind of going around in circles here, kind of like roaming around 
the pizza place. And finally, if you say go home as a standard task, each NPC, if I go back here to Mark, or no, let's just pick Kevin here, has a home base, which is going to be a right now a point of interest, POI house two, which is gonna be this guy right here. So that is the main idea. You would create as many profiles as you want. Each profile will have a list of tasks. Each task can be a point of interest, a standard task, or a specific actor or location. And when you get to the point of interest, which is kind of interesting here, let's say that they select that they're coming to the warehouse, each point of interest will have several stations, and these are the purple things right here. And they'll have specific entrances, you can see here. And once an AI goes to the point of interest, the point of interest will assign the AI a random entrance. So the AI will say, hey, I'm coming to the warehouse. We'll send a message to the warehouse. The warehouse will reply back with a random entrance. The NPC will come into the entrance. And as soon as it hits the entrance, it'll go back to the uh, point of interest manager and say, hey, I need you to assign me a station. Then the point of interest keeps track of all of the stations and the state of each station. If a station is free, meaning it's not occupied by another NPC, it'll give a random station. And when the NPC gets to the station and it overlaps here, you'll see that the station basically has, it has a, it can have one static mesh, like a prop. For example, if you want the NPC to sit on a chair, you would, you would specify the chair static mesh here. And then there's a bunch of options here. And those are mainly the animations. So you would have a, an array of either intro clips, loops, and outros. And right now this one only has loops and these are animation montages here. And you can see that in this station, you can have talking one to three, don't know one and two, and thinking. So the NPC would come into the station, would pick a random montage, and then from there it'll have, you can specify a sound list, you can specify a transform if you need to uh, lerp the transform of the NPC to a specific location, and then you have a duration range, min and max. So when an NPC comes to this station, it'll pick a random app, um, animation, and it'll decide to stay here a random time between 10 seconds and 30 seconds. When this is done, the NPC will then communicate back to the POI manager and say, hey, I'm done, give me a new station, and then he'll be assigned another station. And he'll stay in this point of interest for as long as the task duration is uh, running. So if the original task said it was gonna be 120 seconds, then it'll stay here inside the warehouse for 120 seconds, bouncing between different stations, and each station can have a different time once the task is completed then it'll pick another task and the other task could be hey go to the pizza place so the npc will finish the animation would exit from one of the exits here and then would go to the next point of interest and then the cycle will repeat and then once the cycle is done you have a few options here and you can see here that i have things like um what is the profile execution mode and you have right now repeat the profile indefinitely, which in this case would be what Bob had. Go home is the last task. And then when that time is done, go back to, to the warehouse, then go back to the pizza place, then go back home. So then it's completely cyclical. It never ends. And this is the one that I have implemented right now. Uh, you could also have the option to straight up go home when the profile is completed. So there is no, there is no re repetition. When the profile is completed, he just goes home. Mm -hmm. Or you could have stay at the last task indefinitely. That's another option. So that, say that the last task is stay at the pizza place. When, when the profile is completed, it'll just continue in the pizza place indefinitely until something else happens. Uh, and in this case, that's where the time of day profile uh, system would come into play. Uh, there's also a couple of things here. Uh, stations have tags I forgot to say that so if I select the station you'll see that there's a tag list and right now there's the standard station tag 
And what that means is that if I go to any NPC, each individual NPC has a tags list for stations. And right now the default is station. So this is a way for us to subdivide the stations inside a location. So let's say that some locations in here inside the warehouse have, I don't know, um, you can have literally any task, right? You could have female, right? For example, or male, or, you know, depending on like a, a class, like wizard or a warrior or whatever. And then you go to each individual NPC and you say, well, Stacy here, uh, she can only use stations that have the task, the, the tag female and wizard. And then when it gets to the to the warehouse, then the manager will actually only look for for stations that are that have those tags. And that way you can specify maybe the wizards will only use like a wizard table or, um, you know, or females will only do specific jobs um, while males or warriors or whatever, whatever category you want to use, uh, they'll do that. And what happens if there are no stations available? So I already took care of that issue. Say that Kelsey here arrives at the warehouse and all of her stations that she could use are completely full. There's NPCs there. Then they fall back into a roaming mode and then Kelsey would just roam around inside the, the point of interest randomly until the station is freed up and then Kelsey will be queued and then she can go to a um, station at that point. That system is still very flimsy, which is why I didn't show it, but it's there. The time of day is sort of working, but not really, really, really buggy, which is why I did not show it there. Uh, and you can see that there's animation stuff here. Um, so that is pretty much it. Uh, I feel like I've done quite a bit. I mean, I've only been working on this for two weeks, which if you've been on Discord, you'll, you'll notice that I've been kind of quiet on the PCG channel. Usually I, um, I put up, you know, screenshots or I kind of, you know, give you guys kind of a hint of what I've been working on. But for the past two weeks or so, I've been kind of uh, working on this thing. Um, PCG is still my main project, of course. Uh, so don't you guys worry about that. I know a lot of people are working on that, are waiting on that rather. But uh, sometimes when you start getting uh, burnt out, uh, I found that the best thing to do is kind of work on something separate. And this has been kind of a nice little side project. So I have lots of ideas. I've been talking to several uh, community members. Actually, two community members are actually doing their own uh, manager system themselves. So we've been talking, uh, you know, in a little group, trying to share ideas. And each one of us has kind of the same idea, high level, but each one is doing their systems a little differently. Uh, so it's always fun to see how other people think and design their systems. But I wanted to make this video today because I feel like I have enough to show that code is functional, but mostly uh, because I wanted to get your feedback. Uh, some people have asked about this. Some people probably this is a super big surprise. Uh, but is this something useful? I mean, the main questions that I have for you guys that are watching this is first, what do you think? Does my design, my idea make sense? If you were to uh, make a game, or you're making a game and you need NPCs to have schedules, it could be any type of game, right? Uh, is this system useful to you? Uh, would the logic of the profiles and points of interest with stations and entrances and whatnot, does that make sense to you? Do you see any big issues? Uh, and most importantly, do you have any suggestions? <laughs> Again, this is very, very, very early. Uh, I do have other ideas that I have uh, you know, I have my little Trello board of, you know, different ideas, things that are work in progress, things that I have not started yet, uh, things that are kind of suggestions, but I would love to hear what you guys think. And if you have any suggestions, any features that would be really, really critical for your game, please uh, leave a comment on the video or come join the Discord if you haven't joined. And I'm going to go ahead and create a brand new channel. It's going to be called NPC Manager. So we're going to have another channel. You can come here and discuss uh, your ideas and let me know what you think. So, yeah. So that is pretty much it, guys. Uh, hopefully you liked what I've been working on. Hopefully this is a nice little surprise and you like where I'm going with this. Let me know what you think in the comments below. And I will talk to you guys in the next video. Thanks a lot.